All right, Eric, let's build you a candy painted two pill, two 2879s. And boy, these things are about to be completely rare, more rare than gold. <laughs> Got your board there all polished, man, like a mirror. Look at that. You can see me in it. Look at that, man. Boy, that thing is polished. You can see the old gatekeeper up in that cat and pick them, man. The old GK. <laughs> That's something I've been kind of doing lately. Keep that thing from oxidizing too, being all polished. All right, man, got all your parts there ready to go. Let's go ahead and get this joker built. There's your beautiful homebrew amp uh, case right there, excuse me. Beautiful blue candy painted metal flake. All right, we'll be back with a completed amplifier, hopefully. All righty, Mr. Eric. Got your uh, amplifier all done, man. All tuned up. I'm telling you, man, this thing is uh, <laughs> this thing is is doing well, doing uh, very well actually. Try something a little new with this one that I've uh, been wanting to try. Something that I, uh, my buddy the genius, I call the genius, uh, mentioned to me. And uh, basically, you take a look at the output transformer. Hmm, looks a little different, don't it? The wraps. It's all about that coverage area. Thought I'd try something a little different, and from what I'm seeing, it is performing a little better. I mean, this thing is getting close to pegging a 500 watt slug out on the peak. Just hitting with the bench radio. Now that is some good PEP forward swing coming out of this amplifier. No doubt about it. So there you go, man. Two brand spanking new non-dot Toshiba's worth over $110 a piece. I hadn't labeled it up yet. I'm just going to put your uh, SSB label on the back. You're in and out. There ain't really no reason to put an on and off for that. You know what that is. So, got the uh, the bench radio driving about 4 watts RMS into it. Let's go ahead and hit the power supply. We're on 14.7 volts. Alrighty. And the input reflect is great. It's actually swinging back a bit. We're on the 5 watt slug. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's a 5 watt slug now. Oh, that is getting close to pegging out the 500 watt slug on peak. You're looking at the middle scale. Oh, out buddy you just gotta hit it with that bright tone 250 watt slug on the RMS this is gonna give you a more accurate representation if I had a thousand watt slug in you'd probably be doing like a 120 130 bird so you're looking at the top scale no oh, about 110 or so RMS here's your dead key good low dead key no Dude, this amplifier is performing very nice. Very nice. I think this is something I'm going to start doing when I use these 5.8 core transformers. Alright, let's hook up the old, uh, the old stick man radio, which is right here. Let's hook that bad boy up and see what we're going to be getting out of it RMS wise. We're already pegging the 500 watt slug out. And that's all I really care to show two pills doing. 500 watts peep is rocking. I've seen them up to six, seven hundred watts when you're pushing a snot out of them, but 
I want to see the RMS come up a little bit. That's what I want to see. That RMS. Because that bird RMS average watts. That's what moves the other operator's needle. Alright, brother. Got you all done up, man. Of course, this amplifier looks ten times better in person man, than it does on camera. The metal flake, the sparkle. Look at that, man. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I went ahead and went with black lettering on this because this type of blue is not too dark. It's not dark enough where I'll have to uh, I have to use white lettering. So I turn the power supply off here. So I went with uh, black lettering. I think it's one of the first blue boxes. Um, I'll do that. This is just a different color, blue, different shade, a little bit on the lighter side. So there's a side man, and they say he's pretty good man for him, you know, home brewing this box right here. He's putting out some great air. Of course, that's the sideband delay. It's not biased or nothing. But hey, you on the CB band, ain't nobody gonna tell the difference when you're out there. <laughs> There you go, man. I tell you, I keep telling myself one of these, one of these days, I'm gonna make time to build myself one of these beautiful little candy builds, man. But I still ain't done it. I've been building these candy painted amps and amplifiers now for about what six, seven years now. I still ain't sat down and just built me something good. <laughs> but. That's how it is when you've been backed up about every, about, every, about the whole time you've been rocking and rolling. But I won't be that way long. I quit taking them bills a long time ago. And I'm getting one done at a time. One at a time. I know you waited a good little while for this one, bud. I thank you for hanging in there. Now, let's get on to your free... Free Texas Star 350 repair. Why is it free? Because you had to wait so long. I always take care of my customers the best way I can, man. Especially when I'm in the fault. I just broke one of my discs in this thing. These things are so brittle, but goodness, they cut so quick and so thin. All right. Ready to rock and roll, man. I'm going to go ahead and get this in the house, get it packaged up, and come out here tomorrow and get on your Texas Star. We'll see you. Bye bye. All right, man. We got the cover, uh, Stickman Cover 29, hitting it with about 8 watts of RMS. <coughs> of course, 500 watts slow. No, off the scale. 250 watts slow. Reading the top scale, a little bit over 150 bird. Just out of curiosity, let's put the thousand watt slug in where the 250 is. Give me a second. I'm just gonna put the camera down. I just want to see what it's going to show with the thousand watt slug in you know, out of curiosity. You get a lot more accurate representations there when you get closer to your output. Alright, thousand watt slug, so you're looking at the bottom scale. This is RMS. Thousand watt slug, bottom scale. Oh, so look at that, that's showing 200 bird. <laughs> so that'll show you the the representation is a lot more accurate well you know what to be honest I'm sitting here thinking I can't remember which is accurate or not I can't remember if it's more accurate with the thousand watt slugs if we're not pushing close to the max with it or if you're getting closer to the max it's not as accurate I can't even I'm, I had that in my mind at one point of time but I normally use a thousand watt slug. It don't matter which one I use. I've got two here. 
they both show the same exact output and on the thousand watt slug we're seeing the 200 that I normally would be seeing hitting it with this radio no and that's right there where it really where it should be doing the 250 will show a little less on the RMS but I would rather see a little less than than too much so that gives you an idea you can go ahead and say to be safe 150 160 to 200 bird hitting it with 8 watts RMS drive and that radio is doing about 40 watts PEP so this amplifier is absolutely working very awesome the peak power it's producing just with the bench radio was phenomenal phenomenal the way I did this transformer thank you Mr. RF man for that tip that's what this thing's all about we live in a dog eat dog world each one teach one alright let's get the fan wired up here and get the top on I did have a blue fan for you which is right here but then I figured out my buddy that made this case for me shot out to Mr. Longmore <laughs> Man. Big shout out to you, Cotton Picker. He made this case himself, y'all. This guy has some amazing skills, man, to be able to make this with the, the equipment that he had at the time. And these were, these were really just supposed to be prototype cases he sent me for me to just check out and see. These were the first ones he tried in this way. And then I ran that little cell, and that's where you popped on with the cell. You got this for a decent price. But uh, he put an 80 millimeter hole there. <laughs> so I was forced to use an 80 millimeter fan, and luckily I found me a fan that was actually a little bit too fast. So I went ahead and backed her down with a 10 ohm resistor, and that puts it at a really good speed. Really good speed I can put up with. So let's get this thing labeled up, get the top on, get it all screwed on. I'm going to take me some pictures of this thing. be a nice little driver too man I didn't add a variable to it because you know it's a high drive and I didn't think you, you wanted a variable anyway and I know you Eric you got all the proper equipment over here if you ever wanted to use this as a driver I know you got a radio that you can have full control over the dead key with so you don't even need a variable anyway alright man these cases were actually made it made by the dimensions of the CVS3 case and uh, of course he just didn't get the lips you know done the way they are where that would sit on which is fine I incorporated it and bolted it with with the uh, bolts and I made it work this is my second one I've done with these cases I've got two more I've got two more I'm doing just going in those cases One's an HG, one's a 1446, Mr. Danny. Mr. Danny Whitehorse, or Danny Horse, I believe it is. So, it turned out good, man. So when we get this done, I'll be right back to show you the final product. The GK, you said that, I'll be back. <laughs> 